Alrighty, so this is the first of back-to-back Q&A videos here on OTR Essential. Thanks to those of you that took to the Facebook page for the show and posted your questions there for this Q&A. The Twitter one is upcoming soon, so let's go ahead and get started. Ryan Sanderson asks, do you think WWE is going to try and have John Cena beat Dean Ambrose's record for longest U.S. title reign? Oh, that's not, I don't even think that's a question. I mean, and, and let's be honest. Who the fuck would legitimately beat Cena for that title at this point in time? He just made the WWE World Heavyweight Champion tap out on a Raw. They just did that. The only way that that wouldn't happen is because the WWE is going to throw that belt on Cena at SummerSlam. And then maybe they would have him surrender the U.S. title. That way he doesn't have to... Do the honors to anybody, making all of that, as it so often is with Cena, a big fucking waste of time. There's a part of me that believes that that's what they want to do, and that's what they're going to try and do, is have Cena win the title at SummerSlam Night of Champions sometime very, very soon, and then maybe he would surrender the U.S. title. Just a thought. Uh, let's see here. Seiji Otaku. With Sting rumored to make an appearance at SummerSlam, would a rematch with Triple H be the best thing? If he did make an appearance, I think he would have to get involved in uh, Taker Lesnar. Um, as far as a rematch with tri Triple H, no. Triple H already beat him. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't really see what the point is. Uh, let's see here. Keem the Based God Johnson, why does WWE think to care about diversity amidst the Hogan debacle when a Divas match hasn't been invented since 2005 or there hasn't been a black WWE champion yet? Great question. Still waiting for the answer. I'm also waiting for the answer to find out why the WWE hasn't blacklisted and Ben Wad uh, Donald Trump in a similar fashion to Hulk Hogan. Now, granted, Hogan is more closely associated with the WWE, clearly, but when we talk about racism, and if racism is that evil, according to the WWE, and they believe that much in equality and integration and all these things that they really don't fucking agree about, that they've never believed in, uh, then Donald Trump would have been blacklisted far before Hulk Hogan ever would have, I assure you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Deshaun King. Uh, since Vacant is getting popular in the WWE and on internet wrestling memes, which wrestler should WWE choose wisely to embrace the gimmick? Zack Ryder. That way you can make up some championship for him, the Vacant Championship, and he never shows up. He's never there. He never works a match. Imagine the mystery and the drawing power for a guy that you never fucking get to see and never see him defend the championship. <laughs> what the hell do they have to lose? Uh, let's see here. Javon Mallet. Do you think Cesaro versus Rollins versus Owens versus Cena for the main event of SummerSlam would be a good match? <laughs> no. Rast, I'm telling you. Fuck no. Any of these matches involving Cena are going to be shit because you know how they're going to finish. Uh, Pietro Cervale. How is WWE going to book the finish between Taker and Brock? Either Brock wins and it was pointless, or Taker wins and ending the streak was pointless, and doing what they'd done with Brock after the fact was completely fucking pointless, um, or they're going to do something where somebody gets involved in the match somehow, some way, which again is a possibility. Um, I, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't. And it's not even so much about the thing of, well, having Taker losing again is stupid because it is, but having Lesnar lose is also stupid. You've made your decision. You have to run with it, and now you have to go with it. But then having to beat Taker again, it's like, what the fuck's the point? He's just... If they were going to do this, then they should have done this at WrestleMania 31, in my opinion. It would have made more sense than to wait another several months to do it at SummerSlam, although they badly, desperately needed a SummerSlam main event, and now they clearly have one. That's the one thing I can say. Um, let's see here. Pat Bazzini. Uh, have you ever noticed every time that Cena faces an internet darling at SummerSlam for the title, neither walks out with the belt? It's always the Money in the Bank winner who cashes in. Um, and so he goes on to say, talk about if Rollins faces Cena, do you think there's a great chance that Sheamus cashes in and wins the WWE title? Uh, I seem to remember that at SummerSlam 2013, uh, didn't Daniel Bryan beat John Cena? Yeah. You have to jog my memory, but I'm pretty sure that happened. Or was that 2013? Who the fuck? You know, it's 2013. Who ever gets? Who the fuck cares? Um, let's see here. Richie James, which two superstars do you think have the most chance of creating the next definitive feud together in pro wrestling? I don't know. I don't know if anybody fucking does in today's 
freaking professional wrestling environment here in North America. Mm. Being honest, the wrestling business in this country is that bad. It is that shitty. Especially for the bigger companies. Now you all have independents that put on good shows uh, for the crowds that they have, for the audience they're trying to go after, and I applaud them for that, but that stuff doesn't necessarily carry over on a bigger level either. Um, let's see here. Uh, Trevor Clark. With all of the things Hogan has done for wrestling and everyone knowing of Hulk Hogan's past ties with WWE, is it even possible for WWE to totally give him the Benoit treatment? No, it's not. And they need to stop acting like this because what are they going to sit there and do? Andre the Giant slipped on a banana peel and fell head over ass over tea kettle, whatever the fuck, at WrestleMania 3. King Kong Bundy was beat by the Invisible Man in the Steel Cage match at WrestleMania 2. Ultimate Warrior beat Horace Hogan in the main event of WrestleMania 6. The Rock faced off against The Rock at WrestleMania 18. That's why he's such a great actor, because he could be two people at the exact same time. I mean, it's just... I, I, I could understand the distancing part, but the complete removal is also bullshit. I'm just saying. It'd be different if Hogan killed somebody... Then we could start considering the Benoit treatment. He didn't kill anybody last time I checked. He didn't rape anybody last time I checked. I mean, so, while what he did was bad, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, and would a heel that's obsessive, sadistic, and power-hungry be able to work in WWE when it's Vince McMahon? Yes. If they actually knew how to book people like that? Yes. Uh, but otherwise it doesn't. Um, Michael Bork, who do you think will win at SummerSlam, The Undertaker or Brock Lesnar? I don't know. I'm not sure there is a finish. Again, this is just one of these lose-lose situations similar to Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31. I don't think it really benefits anybody involved if either party wins. I'm not sure... You know, it's even when Taker came out, and this is one thing I should have talked about in the Battleground review, when Taker came out and Lesnar's looking at him, Lesnar's acting all scared and cowardly. Man, fuck him. Yeah, so what, that's Taker. You clean this clown's clock at WrestleMania 30. To me, the appropriate reaction for a monster like Brock Lesnar should have been to look at Taker and fucking laugh his ass off in his face and then get serious once he realized Taker's there to kick his fucking ass. He should have been laughing. You should have been thinking this is a fucking joke. Get out of my face, Grandpa. All that type of shit. Um, let's see here. Gary Connell Jr., what are your thoughts on Japanese wrestling? I just don't watch it. I don't really care. People like it. Good for them. I just really don't have an opinion one way or another because I don't watch it. NJ Johnson, uh, what would be your advice to a new YouTube channel that talks about wrestling? Our style is good Google Hangouts. Thank you. Um... That's a good way to go with Hangouts because you can get other people involved, something I really don't do, probably should have done. That probably could have helped increase the audience uh, for this channel probably 50 to 100% over the course of the past two years. There's no question about that because uh, you see other people that do this. This is one way that they really help themselves. If you want to get serious about it, put some money behind it, uh, maybe do some advertising on YouTube, try to target specific people that uh, watch wrestling-related videos and wrestling reviewers on YouTube. Uh, one thing, if you're going to do the Google Hangouts, you know, while I don't like the thought of doing two, three-hour videos, you can look at the model of somebody like, let's say, a Bruce Blitz and what he did on the positive and say, when the YouTube view algorithms changed and how they featured videos and promoted videos changed, he, he was on the right end of that. Because I could sit there, let's say, for example, and do a 20-minute video and... Every single person could watch, you know, maybe 80 to 90 percent of that, which again is going to be incredibly generous. It's just you don't get that type of retention on a 15, 20 minute video. So, you know, even like, let's say, average like 60, 65 percent, which is something to pretty consistently get on this channel in terms of audience retention. So, out of a 20 minute video, people on average are watching, let's say, somewhere between 12 to 14 minutes. Okay. Now, Bruce Blitz does a three hour video. People peace out after 45 minutes, therefore only watching really tr effectively 25% of his video. Who is YouTube going to feature, promote, advertise, what have you? It's not going to be me. 
is going to be Bruce Blitz and that channel and what they do over there because they were smart enough to realize, and at least I believe this, I could be wrong, it could have just happened by circumstance, but Bruce Blitz was smart enough to realize that the way videos were going to get promoted on YouTube and when they changed the algorithms, and I'm giving him credit here, and I'm just going to assume the positive and that he knew this and was smart enough to understand this and embrace this, was that he knew that it didn't matter how much of your total video they watched in terms of the audience retention or the number of views itself. It was about how long you kept people on YouTube in general. So his three-hour video that gets somebody to watch for 45 minutes, even though they're only watching a quarter of his videos, are much more valuable in YouTube's eyes nowadays than my 20-minute video that gets people to watch an average of somewhere between 12 to 14 minutes. Now, sure, I'm, there are plenty of people I'm sure that watch an hour, hour and a half, two hours, two and a half, all three hours of a Bruce Blitz, let's say, three-hour raw review or pay-per-view review, what have you, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if people watch a longer percentage of my video in relation to his or anybody else's for that matter. It's the fact that he had that, he had that pattern down and he was there and able to capitalize on it. He backed it up and reinforced it with the website, which is something that, you know, I've never really done because of many different reasons, just haven't done it. So you want to do it, you want to be taken seriously, make sure you back it up with the website, make sure you have active Facebook, Twitter pages, da, 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 da. This is something you could carry over beyond just being about wrestling, but just YouTube channels in general, you know. I mean, there's a lot of different things. Uh, I tried to talk about interesting topics. Just because they sound interesting to you doesn't mean that anybody else is going to give a fuck. However, at the same point in time, if you are passionate about what you talk about, you can make other people care about it, even if they really don't care about it. So there's some advice right there. Uh, Martin James, why does Eva Marie get so much crap from the fans for not watching wrestling, but they love Tori Wilson even though she didn't watch it either? Some of these fans grew up on Tori. There were some of their earliest Spank Bank memories, so that's the difference right there. Um, sometimes we take wrestling a little too seriously, especially the in-ring components. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Everett Harding, which feud in WrestleMania match did you like better? Undertaker versus Batista or Undertaker versus Edge? Uh, um, I'll go take a Batista, but it's very, very close. I could have went Taker Edge, too. It's very, very close. Uh, Michael Bork, who gets a better reaction from the crowd? The New Day, Ryback, or Seth Rollins? Ryback. Ryback. I, 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 I clearly believe so. doesn't mean that it's automatically true, but just based on my perspective, my opinion, based off of what I hear and what I see, I personally think that Ryback gets the best reactions. Now, granted, he's the one being portrayed as a babyface, where the New Day and Seth Rollins are being so-called portrayed as villains, so, you know, it is what it is. Victor Quintero, how are you, Schleg Daddy? Super duper! Do you think Cesaro versus Kevin Owens could be that great mid-card SummerSlam match like Ziggler versus Mysterio was in SummerSlam 2009? Didn't that match uh, kick off that show? Just saying. Uh, Cesaro versus Kevin Owens could be. It'd be nice if they put a little bit of story to it. And no, just having somebody run in or having them be a part of a tag, tag match is not putting a story to it. Uh, but yes, it could be that type of match. I, I do agree with that. There's a very good chance. Uh, New Mosaic. Do you think James Storm and Bobby Roode would fare well in the WWE Attitude Era? Um... Either as individuals or as beer money. Uh, they could have worked in the Attitude Era as a tag team. I'm not sure they would have really worked as individuals. Um, Moises Enrique. Will Cena be tied with Ric Flair's uh, world title record at SummerSlam? I think there's a chance. Let's put it this way. It's not a question of if Cena ties and passes Flair... It's how soon and how far he goes past him. I fully expect Cena, when all is said and done, to be somewhere between a 22 to 24 time world champion. As this company's entire mission statement now, especially it seems like with the shit with Hogan, is just another fucking nail in the coffin. Vince McMahon and everybody involved with that company are going to do everything they can to try and pound enough propaganda down people's fucking throats to where they actually get people to buy and do the fact and believe that John Cena is the greatest WWE superstar of all time. That's their entire mission. That's their entire hope. That's their entire focus. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, James White, is there anybody legit left to beat Cena for the U.S. championship? And if so, who? It's a great question. I mean, if they put a little momentum behind him again, Roman Reigns, 
He's wasting time with Bray Wyatt. It's a problem. Nobody serious. Uh, Navfreet Singh, could the Shield Triple Threat have been a strong SummerSlam main event if they gave money in the bank to Reigns? Could have worked. Could have worked. Davey Jefferson, do you think the WWE fired Hulk Hogan to look good in the public's eyes or more to remind their employees that they can make an example out of anybody or a little bit of both? I think a little bit of both. A lot of this was uh, pathetic PR. There's a bit of a reminder there, too, of... At the end of the day, the WWE, while you think they might need you, if it really gets to get, nobody is untouchable. And as much as we might think that's not the case, that even includes John Cena. Vince McMahon, at the end of the day, believes in Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon's brand. And anybody, and I emphasize again, anybody not named Vince McMahon is potentially expendable. That includes family, that includes Kevin Dunn, and that most certainly includes John Cena. Uh, let's see here. Andy Nielsen, is WWE one of the most racist, sexist, and homophobic companies that has ever existed? Um, there are so many companies that have exhibited so many of those traits over the years. Uh, WWE just happens to do it in a much more public specter and a public light. I think it's unfair to say that they're one of the most racist, sexist, and homophobic companies that have ever existed. Because there are a lot of companies that have been like that for a long time, going back even farther before the WWE ever existed. And there are probably companies that are even more racist, sexist, and homophobic than the WWE today. Although, if you said, are they one of the most racist, sexist, and homophobic in today's corporate world, among publicly traded companies, there's a pretty good chance they are. They're near the top of the list. They're, they're in that 95th to 99th percentile for sure. Uh, Robert Duran, how late do you think it's too late for Daniel Bryan to come back this year? I already have been cleared and might be back past SummerSlam or could hold off until the Royal Rumble. I don't even care. He comes back, cool. Doesn't come back. Okay. I mean, you know, really, if you're a Daniel Bryan fan, why would you even be that excited about him coming back? Because you'd just be worried about the next time he's going to get hurt. Furthermore, you know that he damn sure good and well isn't going to push to the level that you expect him to be or want him to be or feel like you need him to be, which will ultimately leave you feeling disappointed, which means that Daniel Bryan could very well be treated as a second-rate guy and a second-level importance, which, again, is going to frustrate, piss off, and disappoint a lot of you. Um... There's a part of me sometimes that doesn't want Daniel Bryan to ever come back. But, yes, I know. Fuck you, Jeff. All right, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan Pittman, if you were a WWE superstar, what would your gimmick and finisher be? Uh, I mean, there's so many different gimmicks I could do. I could be the one that's trying to knock up all the black women backstage. I mean, that would be believable. Um, let's see here. What else? I could sit there and be, I could do some type of political gimmick. I could be some type of parody Republican, or I could be the socialist. That's a gimmick that I've talked about before, where I come out with a flag with maybe Hugo Chavez's uh, <laughs> picture on it, and I speak well of him, rest his soul and all. I come out wearing a Barack Obama shirt with a hammer and sickle inside of me. There's a lot of different gimmicks that I could do. I could be the uh, white-black supremacist. I mean, that's another idea that I've always had. You know, I had Dave Chappelle and uh, Clinton Bigsby, the black-white supremacist. What about a white-black supremacist? You know, and a lot of different things I could do. Um, in terms of a finisher, I would be a nut shot. Uh, let's see here. Anything else that I want to... Oh, Kyle Dixon. What women in the WWE can be a huge draw like a Ronda Rousey? None, because WWE never let it get to that point. Uh, Luke Harris, what would happen if John Cena made racist remarks? They'd suspend him. They'd suspend him. They would fine him significantly. Now they would have no choice but to fire him because, man, if they didn't, even the people that don't like Hogan, even the people that would defend Cena would have no argument. They'd have to say, whoa, 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 hold up. This is just straight up Bolshevitz. 
Bullshit. And that's exactly what it would be. All right, so thanks to all you guys. That's enough of the Facebook question. 20 minutes. I think that's enough. We can move on to the Twitter Q&A now. But thanks again for submitting your questions. We'll be doing this again later this week or weekend. So uh, come back later, post questions. Uh, check out the other videos here on this channel. Yeah.